Good evening, viewers. Today we have a very interesting guest with us, and this is Suborno Isaac Bari. Welcome, Suborno. Thank you. Uh, it's very you... nice to meet you, Mina. Thank you so much. How do you like to be called? You like to be called by the name of Isaac or Bari? Uh, Isaac. Isaac, okay. So, friends, let me tell you about this very interesting young little professor. He's the world's youngest professor at the age of 11. And I've been watching his videos and I was just wonderstruck by his ability, you know, in not only in maths, but the very ability to understand things so fast. So let me give you a little brief about uh, 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 Isaac. So let's start with his background. Uh, Subodra Isaac Bari was born on April 9th, 2012 in New York, USA. He's 11 year old 12th grader at Malvern High School. In October, 2023, he will apply to Harvard University for admission into the physics BS program. He scored 780 over 800 in SAT math and is the world's youngest perfect scorer in AP Calculus BC. He is a laureate at the Da Vinci Institute, a PhD granting institution in South Africa. He is preparing to become the youngest gold medalist in the International Math Olympiad, IMO. He published two books, The Love in 2019 and Manish in 2023. He's delivered physics lectures at many universities around the world, including Mumbai University in 2020, Jane University 2023. He's also given book talks at many universities around the world, including the University of Pune at 2020. And the Da Vinci Institute in 2021. He's won recognition from President Obama in 2016, a Nobel laureate from Kailash Satyarthi 2020, and IIT Jodhpur for being able to solve uh, PhD level maths and physics problems. He will run for American president in 2048. So that's quite a, a background you have there, Isaac. Uh, so very interesting indeed. So I'm not going to ask you the typical questions that people ask you, uh, asking you to solve maths. So let me ask you, at what age did you realize that you're different from other children? Uh, when, well, when I was one or two years old, uh, my mother was trying to teach me basic arithmetic. Uh, she was hoping to get me in a gifted and talented program. Uh, and I did much better than she expected. So I was able to understand addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And I even said, if one plus one is two, x plus x is two x. And if two times three is six, then two x times three x is six x squared. So okay. <laughs> uh, that's when yeah. my mom uh, got a little scared and she talked to my dad to give me further education. My dad was more of an expert in math because he was taking math classes at uh, the City College of New York, which is a pretty good university. So uh, after that, he started giving me um, more advanced education and eventually I was able to understand very complicated things at five or six years old. Oh, great. Okay. How does it work? Uh, did you have to refresh your memory or even before seeing any number, uh, you know, any complicated uh, questions? Uh, did you know what it is all about? How do you see some, uh, when a professor puts forth some very complicated, uh, you know, a question uh, on uh, numbers. So how do you see it? Well, it's just like a lock. Uh, so you can uh, try using a bunch of different keys or a bunch of different approaches. But the most important part is finding the key or finding your approach. Uh, the beginning of a problem is uh, the most important part because the way you approach the problem is going to really affect how long it takes you to solve and if you can actually understand it. So uh, I believe that it's all about really uh, finding the start of your approach. And from there, everything uh, goes very well. So do you get nervous uh, watching or meeting with MIT professors? Do you get scared or nervous at any point? Yeah, of course. Uh, so when I meet with all of these high profile figures, uh, I am very nervous because 
Um, I believe that they've accomplished and achieved much more than I have so far. So I'm very excited to meet them. And honestly, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for most people, which is why I'm uh, very uh, astonished, honestly, and uh, nervous whenever I meet one of them because I have no words to say and I feel like they've done much more things than me. And it, it feels also a little awkward because I feel like I'm taking time out of their day. Um, okay. Okay. Because I'm a little lower than them. Uh, I haven't done as much as they have in yeah. their scientific career. So you feel very humble. Mm -hmm. So which are the areas that you're not familiar with? You know, and you're scared to dabble in. Mm, well, I'm almost about ninth to 10th grade level in most of my subjects, uh, writing, reading, and art. So I can't really say there's a subject that I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, but if I had to say my least favorite subject, I would say uh, bio uh, biology. Okay. And uh, do you uh, at any point think about rebirth and that this accumulation of knowledge that you have comes from your previous birth? Uh, well, rebirth is a religious thing. Maybe it comes from that, maybe it doesn't. I would like to respect everybody's religious beliefs. Uh, personally, uh, I and my religion uh, doesn't believe in rebirth, but I respect everybody else's beliefs, and we should not attack each other over what no. we believe. Uh, no. I don't want to go that much further uh, no. because I don't want to... No worries. Yeah. No worries. Do you feel kind of, uh, you know, stupid or silly when you play with children of your age or interact with them? Uh, I don't do that anymore. Uh, not since I was taken out of fourth grade. So, uh, since 2020... When, when children come to your house, you know, your cousins or others. Oh. Uh, well, it's fine. I still have to interact with them after all. Uh, I'm a human, not just someone who spends all their time studying all day and meeting with professors. So, I have to still talk to all my friends and cousins. Uh, because they are valuable of a family and members too. And uh, I love spending time with it. Okay. So, uh, you know, as a, as a uh, you know, are you a foodie? Do you like food? I mean, I like any kind of food. I don't really care about the standard of my food. Uh, if it's edible, then I'll take it. But do you have any favorites? Uh, I would say, and I know this might reinforce some American stereotypes, but a chicken sandwich. Okay, that's a simple, simple food. Yes. <laughs> okay, going to the next question. How was the reaction of professors when they found out you knew much more than them? Uh, a lot of professors uh, that I meet, like MIT professors, uh, they uh, know a lot more uh, than me. And honestly, I haven't met a lot of professors yet that I know more than. So I feel humbled anytime I get the opportunity to meet with one of uh, these MIT professors, Harvard prof professors, uh, New York University professors, uh, etc. Yeah. So can you tell me, is atom a particle or a wave? An atom? Yeah. Is atom a particle or a wave? Well, as someone who doesn't like nuclear or quantum physics, I can't tell you that it's made up of particles, but I have heard recently uh, from some uh, from my brother who has studied quantum mechanics before that some of the Broglie wave equation or something like that means that all matter is just a wave with different wavelengths. Uh, I don't study physics as much as I study math, so I don't quite understand what he's trying to get out there. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Now, when you solve a complicated mathematical problem, 
you know, do you really calculate it or it just appears in your mind? I mean, I seriously have to calculate it for anything other than basic stuff. I have to really put my uh, mind to it. I have to get a paper and pen and get to work because otherwise I'm very vulnerable to making mistakes or yeah. forgetting where I was in the problem. Absolutely. Okay. The law of physics uh, doesn't seem to work in subatomic level. For example, the double slit experiment in the case of quantum physics. Do you think that like what is mentioned in the Vedanta, do you have to transcend to another consciousness to know about these things? I'm really not sure about that. Uh, I'm sure it can all be explained using all of the quantum physics and quantum mechanics that we know so far, because we've already structured it around stuff like the double slit experiment. Now, as I've already said, I don't study quantum physics or quantum mechanics. Uh, I feel like physics is a lot less tidy than mathematics, so I don't study that kind of stuff. And, and uh, I couldn't give my honest... A uh, unbiased opinion on whether uh, there are religious aspects to the double slit experiment. Yeah. So, uh, Isaac, when you came to India, what was your feeling? Because you are basically an Indian citizen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what was your feeling when you first came to India and you started attending different, you know, sort of meetings and conferences? Uh, it felt Honestly, kind of like home, uh, but a lot more natural because uh, there weren't many uh, trees or there wasn't much nature to see where I lived when I went to India. So it was a lot more beautiful seeing all the wildlife, all the nature, and also meeting all of these new people was a, a very uh, humbling and great experience. Oh, can you calculate complex calculus? I have to work it out with pen and paper. Uh, okay. I I can try doing integrals in my mind, uh, integrals and derivatives in my mind, but it on sometimes or most of the time doesn't work out because I make an expression mistake or I change a three to a four and stuff like that. Absolutely. Have been following you, says Maya, on your math circle activities. What project are you working on now? Oh, uh, my uh, math circle activities are in training for the International Math Olympiad. And also, they look good on my resume, so there's that. Uh, my math Olympiad training, or my math circle training, is uh, August, ends August 10. Okay. Uh, you have a question from True Indian. What about Vedic maths or easier ones? Are you aware of that? Uh, I have tried Vedic maths before. Uh, honestly, it doesn't feel natural to me because I've grown up all my life uh, doing the basic method of uh, multiplication and division. So uh, even though it might be more efficient to kids who haven't learned the regular way, it feels like forced to do it instead of uh, doing the regular multiplication. Um, Martin is asking you, which area of maths is your favorite? Algebra, geometry, statistics, calculus? I will say that uh, calculus is honestly my favorite subject, but I also like geometry very much. Uh, I don't know why, but I really don't like statistics and probability. Uh, it's just not uh, it's something that I like very much. And it's not something that I'm very good at. Okay. So Maya is asking you, in Mumbai, you had addressed students of Ru Ruya College. What were your impressions of Indian college students? Well, uh, they were very studied back uh, uh, then. Uh, I felt like some of them were a little shy. And the second time when I went to India in April, uh, last April, uh, I went to a university. It's pretty famous, uh, so I'm sure you'll know it, called Jain University. And 
uh, I went there and gave a short talk on math and physics. And uh, the room at least had to have some physics majors, but there was only one lady uh, answering all of the questions that I asked. And when she okay. left, no one else was willing to try anything. So, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. So when, when you're free, Isaac, what do you do? What is, the, what is an activity that you like, as in hobbies? Uh, well, I mostly play some games in my free time. Uh, I will spend time with my brother. And I will also just solve easier math problems. Because solving complicated math problems kind of stresses me out and makes me tired. Yeah. I've seen your brother in some of your videos. Is he very protective about you? Uh, no, but he's uh, very smart and he helps me a lot with all my endeavors. Uh, he's, I think, the smartest person that uh, we have in my family. Uh, he is very supportive as well. And he knows a lot of stuff about physics and math that I don't because he has so much more experience. So uh, he's also the one that I usually consult uh, whenever I try doing physics because I'm somewhat good at physics, but I'm not the best at it. And I'm not as good in physics as I am in math. Yeah. How do you see American education system? Is it different from the Indian educational system in terms of maths? Well, I wouldn't know. Uh, how the Indian education system felt like because I have never actually been an Indian student. Yeah. Uh, I haven't went to uh, like I haven't uh, went to school at an Indian school before. Uh, which part of India are I? Uh, okay. Uh, but I feel like the American education system, uh, honestly, is not the best especially when it comes to math, uh, because it feels like you're just trying to memorize a bunch of equations. You never actually get told why they're useful or where the equations come from. So I feel like uh, that's an issue with the American education system. Now, from what I've seen uh, of the Indian education system, at least in physics, I went to an Indian high school uh, last time I visited uh, India, and they were very smart. They were very good at the kinematics and uh, dynamics that I asked them about, uh, but it felt like they were honestly repeating uh, rote memorizations of the, uh, their definitions. Like, I asked uh, the crowd, uh, what is acceleration? And uh, a girl just started talking and saying, Acceleration is the wonderful increasing of velocity, and velocity is the increase of distance over time, almost as if it was like some sort of audio recording of their okay. physics teacher. So I feel like maybe the same sort of culture of memorization might be present in India, but I know that India has a much better education system uh, than the U.S., uh, considering how studious and uh, determined most Indians I've seen are compared to the American students uh, who are not very committed. Yeah. So I remember when I was in school, uh, you know, I was very good at all the other maths as in geometry and, uh, you know, trigonometry and all that. But I hated arithmetic, you know. And every time these questions about apples and uh, you know, uh, potatoes came in, I would feel, you know, I, I couldn't solve it. So why do many people have a fear for, uh, you know, math? Well, a lot of people, uh, I heard a statistic once that said it was 20%, but I highly doubt it. But a lot of people uh, believe that they just simply can't do mathematics, that it's too hard for them, that it's a subject only for uh, people who are way smarter than them, uh, which is mostly a product of self-doubt. And uh, I really dislike that. I've gone through a lot of self-doubt many times. So, uh, yeah, you, if you believe that you can't do it, uh, then it's mostly your self-doubt. Uh, try getting a new textbook or 
if your brother or sister or mother or father is more experienced in math, you can ask for their help because trust me, they're willing to help you uh, unless you're stuck in some uh, extraordinary family. So uh, yeah, just ask for help when you need it. Not everyone is out to get you. And also I would like to say that uh, don't doubt yourself. You can do as many things as you want to do. And if you think you can't do it, you can't do it. But if you think you can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Have you always been a serious uh, kid? Uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like, uh, yes. But then again, I've only been on this planet for about 11 years. Oh, uh, newbie's comment is a very thoughtful comment. Uh, I feel like it best represents. Uh, I feel like it best represents yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, with my previous response. So also, uh, I've only been on this planet for eleven years, so I can't really say whether I've been serious all my life. Uh, obviously, when I was two or three, I wasn't acting like a studied professor. Uh, I feel like I started to become a little more vocal and comprehensive when I was six or seven. Okay. Uh, in one of the videos, a young girl actually proposes marriage to you. How did you take that? Oh, uh, that was uh, just a comedy skit. That okay. was uh, not a real thing. Uh, okay. We had a little agreement. They were looking to do a project for uh, some club they had at Columbia University. Uh, and I said, we'll agree to it if you do a video for us. So they did the video for us. And uh, we did the video for them. Uh, so we uh, made a little funny joke at the end of it. And uh, it was just a funny experience for everyone. Uh, yeah. We might not have told uh, the people who watched that skit, but yeah, it was fake. Yeah. Uh, Maya says in California, are you working on projects to promote STEM studies? Uh, sadly, I do not live in California, so uh, not in California, but uh, I do. I am working on a pretty secret project to promote uh, studying math. Uh, I'll reveal it to you in maybe a year, maybe six months, uh, whenever the first stage gets finished. Yeah. How do you see artificial intelligence? Is it something that should frighten us, like, as many people put it? Uh, what is your view on AI? Uh, I personally, oh, mm, okay. So I personally believe that AI is a little unethical, especially when you use it for things that should be uh, done by humans, like writing essays or uh, sort of doing other stuff like that, like writing letters. Uh, I feel like it's unethical to do that because it doesn't develop your skill and uh, it just makes teachers think that you actually put in the sincerity and hard work when in reality you just type something into chat GPT. Sorry, my allergies coming in a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like AI is a little unethical. Uh, uh, for um, most of um, most of its uses, uh, I can't really uh, do anything about the rise of artificial intelligence. But Absolutely. I yeah. uh, don't use it that much in everyday life unless yeah. I literally have to use it to meet some sort of deadline. Hmm. Maya says, watch your own da, da Vinci interview answering yeah. questions on all topics, not just maths, but even geopolitics, religion, human equality. So here is one non-math question. Will humans overcome hate and hunger? Uh, that's a very hard question uh, because naturally uh, I feel like there's always going to be some hate for each other. Uh, we're never going to have uh, like a complete balance of resources on, until the world is like entirely under one country. And I don't really support a global government. 
Uh, I support like global agreements like the United Nations, but for the most part, I feel like for for some people, we can't stop that hate or that hunger for greed and power. We can reduce corruption, but we can't completely erase it. We can't completely eliminate it because it's not like we can modify our child's brains at birth. Yeah. Would you like to drink some water before you answer the next question? Sure. Yeah. So what is it, Isaac, that sometimes irritates you? Because, see, you are very much ahead of your age. What is it that about human nature, you know, that can sometimes irritate you? Well, I don't want to put down my fellow humans, uh, but I would like to say that I feel that greed for some people is uh, the thing that forces problems to continue. Even when most people are satisfied, there are some people in the bunch who just want more and more power to themselves and don't believe in the greater good, but uh, believe in their own good instead. Absolutely. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's an entire mental condition called narcissism. Again, I'm not a psych, uh, uh, I'm not a psychologist, so uh, I'm not yeah. going to diagnose uh, yeah. or whatever you have. And my views on this might not be completely correct, but I feel like a part of human nature that's unfixable but also very irritating is our greed or our lust for power and uh, wealth and publicity. Well said. Uh, Newbie is saying, Earth has enough resources to take care of people's needs. The problem is people's greed. So she agrees with you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, Isaac, uh, tell me something. Uh, who, uh, you know, uh, from between your mother and father, who is the one who has influenced your life? I will have to say uh, both of them. My father gave me all of the math training that I have today, and uh, he really inspired me to do math at first. But my mother is the one who's given me all of these uh, values and all of the things that I hold dear uh, to today. Uh, uh, he is the reason why I don't just answer math questions, but also questions on my views about things like terrorism, humanitarianism, uh, poverty. He's given me all of the values that I believe in now. So uh, while he isn't a math student uh, or particularly skilled at math, he's still done so many valuable things for me, and I love uh, her for that. Could you tell me... Uh you know, your schedule, as in, uh, you know, what time you get up and what do you do, you know, throughout the day? Well, usually on the weekdays, I get up at 7.30, 7.40. Uh, on the weekend today, I got up at about 9 o'clock. Uh, and, and what do you uh, do on the weekdays, when, you're, when you're, yeah. Yeah, on the weekdays, I usually... Uh, I usually will make a video or two for an hour or so, and then I go to uh, my math circle program. I leave at 3 p.m., and then uh, I usually have an interview or two to do right after that. And then uh, I get home at about uh, 5 o'clock or so, and then I make a few more videos. I have some free time, and then I make a few videos again. Uh, uh, then I have dinner, and uh, finally I make a few more. Uh, I study a little bit. Uh, I take a little bit more break, and then I go to sleep at about maybe 12 o'clock or one o'clock. Okay. True Indian is asking, uh, who are really good in maths? Indians, Chinese, Jap or Japanese in maths competitions? Well, it's really uh, subjective. And also uh, I feel like it depends on the person that we're talking about. Uh, not all Indians are going to be absolutely perfect in math competitions, and uh, not all uh, and not all 
who is like stereotypically bad at math. Like n uh, not all Americans are going to be like absolutely horrible. Well, not, not Americans, but like uh, it depends on your education system a lot of the time. But there is also just some variable factor of if your child was raised well or uh, stuff like that, or if you're child was just born with some natural random talent for math so yeah. you have an interest in coding and programming says uh, Narayan oh yeah someone else asked this like eight minutes ago but I tried coding and programming a long time ago when I was seven or so I did like it but I've completely forgotten everything I learned back then now and even then I was only at a about an eighth grade or ninth grade level. So I'm not particularly that good at coding. Yeah. So Maya is asking, in your interview with Ravi Mahasahayan, NASA spokesperson, you had asked him about uh, uh, ambition as a child. Could you tell us about your ambition for the future? Well, I'm not really sure uh, about that. I feel like my ambition for the future haven't been completely laid out yet. Uh, I haven't even got uh, fully out of school. And I'm not as experienced and uh, well-spoken as uh, Dr. Marga Sahayam is. Uh, he's the one who's launched uh, almost 100 NASA rockets. So I feel like I don't have as much experience and I don't have... Uh, as much to speak about uh, as he does. And uh, if I want to do one thing, it's to become a math professor so I can inspire others in school like my father inspired me at home. Yeah. Are you homeschooled? No, I'm not. Okay. And Maya says, uh, even though still in school, your principal allowed you to take advanced classes at Columbia. Does this flexibility help students with gifted abilities? Yeah, of course. I would not be able to learn proof by, uh, I wouldn't be able to learn a lot of uh, proofs and a lot of uh, different math concepts that I wouldn't before if uh, my principal didn't allow me to take advanced classes. So uh, of course it helps, uh, this flexibility helps and uh, I would have been pushed back a little bit if I uh, didn't get permission to take these classes. So, of course, uh, principals be very lenient when uh, they see they have gifted kids uh, and they should try to make those gifted kids use it to the most of their potential instead of uh, pushing them to earn perfect A's and then uh, just go on to college as another software engineer or another boring writer. Uh, do you do you really enjoy maths? As in, you know, see, when I I'm a, I'm an artist, so when I paint, I really enjoy it. So, do you really enjoy uh, doing maths? Uh, yeah, I enjoy math. It's very satisfying when things simplify after you've be, uh, been working on something for a long time. It's like uh, when you try a bunch of different keys and uh, you finally get the one that works perfectly or uh, you finally uh, get that approach that you've been waiting for for uh, the longest time. And honestly, it's so satisfying that, uh, about you finding it too. Uh, I can't really explain why math feels so good, but yeah. it almost feels like a... Can I say that word on camera? No, I don't think I can. It almost feels like uh, happiness, almost. Okay. And I see you're multitasking. As you speak, you also read comments. Are you a multitasker? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, usually, uh, I listen to people's uh, comments or I listen to people's conversations in the background. I, uh, I just uh, have that natural sort of instinct. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, I play games. And uh, I don't really uh, do music. Uh, last time I tried to play an inst instrument, which was piano, I kind of miserably failed. So, uh, yeah, I don't do music, but I do play games. Who is your role model? Any particular mathematician? Is Narayan asking? Uh, that is a harder one. 
But I would honestly have to say, well, Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein has been used uh, so many times. But I'd say there are some people who are under acknowledged for their contributions, uh, like uh, Niels Bohr. He completely uh, revolutionized our view of the atom, and uh, he was the one who basically started all of quantum mechanics. But we don't give any credit to him. He was almost like, I feel, like Sir Isaac Newton. Or, yeah. Or How many like languages? Him. How many languages do you know? Who is your favorite? in maths apart from your dad? Oh, uh, well, I just answered the second question. Yeah. So only the first question, yeah. How many languages do I know? Uh, two, I guess. Uh, because obviously I know English, I know a little bit of uh, Bengali, and I know a lot of Spanish. So I'd say uh, one plus one half plus one half is two. Is your mama also a mathematician or any of your forefathers? Uh, well, my grandfather, uh, my grandfather and grandmother are not actually mathematicians. My mother is not a mathematician. Uh, my father is, however, and my brother is too. Okay. So Dr. Ganesh is asking, he's an AI you know, specialist. He's asking you which area of maths you enjoy most as calculus trigonometry. Uh, Dr. Ganesh, he's already said that he enjoys calculus. Oh, wow. So I enjoy calculus and geometry too. I answered that question actually a bit ago. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure uh, when, but yeah, I do enjoy calculus and geometry. Yeah. Have you heard of Shakuntala Devi? I have heard of her, but uh, I don't really know that much about her. Oh, Indian. Oh, yeah. She was the uh, Indian calculator. Uh, the human calculator uh, that was able to calculate like 2,000 digits uh, in her head. Honestly, uh, I'm not a very good human calculator. Uh, so uh, I don't think I can stand up to her. But human calculators aren't very practical when in our modern day and age, we have computers. Uh, the real uh, practical thing is ingenuity because computers uh, can solve all of your uh, quantitative problems, but it can't tell you how exactly to approach a problem. You need to think about how to approach that problem yourself. Yeah. So suppose you have a free day in your life. What would you do on that free day? Uh, that's... A very hard question. In fact, I haven't been asked that one before. Uh, I would say that uh, perhaps I would just uh, take a break, uh, enjoy some math and physics, because those are the things that I love most. Uh, back when I was uh, nine or 10, I didn't get that many interviews. So Saturdays and Sundays would usually be free, uh, free days. Uh, but now with my recent revisit to India, and a bunch of other public stuff, uh, I'm back in the spotlight, so. Yeah. What kind of manifestation do you get out of maths with its physical interpretations? I'm not quite sure what that question means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a little confusing. Okay, do you know chess? Oh yeah, of course I do. But uh, I'm not very good at it. Uh, has, so, yeah. Yeah. Has maths reached its full potential, or we see might see more theorems? Uh, well, there is still obviously math research going on. So yeah, we will see more theorems in the coming years. In the future, uh, math will never be fully complete. Uh, and even if those theorems that we discover uh, will not have applications now, they will have applications 200 or 300 years from now. For example, imaginary numbers, uh, they had absolutely no use at the time they were invented, uh, but uh, they are now used in a lot of physics, uh, all over physics, especially quantum mechanics. Yeah. You want to become the president of USA? 
Mm, well, it's mostly just a dream or an aspiration. I probably won't become the president in 2048, but I can try. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sensible Life is asking you, do you dream of having your own lab or creating something new for society or even you? I feel like creating something new or contributing something is honestly the most important thing someone could do in their life because it means that you will leave a mark uh, that will be seen for years and years to come. Uh, even if that mark is very small, that means that uh, of at least a few people will always remember you for what you've done in math or physics or writing or art or stuff like that. Yeah. So Dr. Ganesh is further explaining, I get manifestations of real life activities handled by nature. This is my way of looking at maths. Mm. Still not clear. Okay. Let's go to the next one. When you see numbers, do you correlate it with something? Well, not really, but I do something similar. Uh, sometimes when I get bored of mathematics, uh, I or I'm solving a very weird algebraic equation, I imagine there's like a battle going on on two sides of the equal sign, and uh, that when you bring a term to the other side, it's like a soldier going into enemy territory. So it's pretty fun to uh, visualize that, but yeah. Do you see numbers in your dreams? What kind of dreams do you see? Not many. Okay. So the few that you see, what do you see? Uh, usually just uh, random dreams. Uh, rarely are they ever, are they ever about numbers. The last dream I had was about three months ago. And uh, I do not remember what it is because uh, I don't dream journal. Okay. Okay, Maya is asking you, you were nominated for the Nobel Prize in 2021. What do you think are your chances in the near future for becoming the youngest winner? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, who was the youngest winner? Oh, uh, Malala won the Nobel Peace Prize in, uh, at the age of 19. Uh, so maybe I have a chance of winning the, well, no, not the Nobel Prize, because there's no Nobel Prize in math, but maybe the Abel Prize. Yeah. Astrology is also related to calculations. Have you explored that? I personally believe that astrology is completely fake. Uh, it's been disproved uh, several times uh, by science. Uh, what time you were born uh, and where the moon was, uh, when you were 27 years old has no relation to what will happen uh, in the future of your life. It all depends on your personal decisions, and astrology is in no way related to calculations. Uh, there is a whole branch about exploring uh, space, and it's called astronomy, and it's been actually scientifically proven, and it doesn't correlate uh, random stuff happening uh, with uh, what's happening in the stars and heavens. In fact, yeah. there was a study one time where an uh, experienced astrologist would have to uh, associate a personality given to them with the time they were born. And uh, they barely guessed better than chance. Uh, often, uh, they only got about 50% of the personalities and birth times right. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, purely uh, Isaac's opinion. Okay. You may differ, viewers, so that's uh, totally up to you. Okay. Another question is, uh, do your friends, some of your friends uh, treat you like nerds, like a nerd? Uh, is this the no question that True Indian asked? Just the yeah, could, yes, very similar, yes. Okay. Uh, not really. Uh, they come to me sometimes for help. But I don't believe uh, that they you know, think that I uh, I am a nerd uh, because they actually interact with me. And also, I look up to teachers uh, because, I mean, they're the ones who 
are teaching me new material every single day. It's not like I'm uh, supposed to be teaching them. Uh, sometimes uh, they're really the ones giving me aha moments, and I really appreciate them for that. Yeah. So what is the, you know, when you, when you uh, go to meet a very important uh, person, a scientist, or you go for an important event, uh, and you're nervous. So what do you do to relax? Do you meditate? No, uh, I don't meditate. Uh, I haven't learned meditation. It probably does work. Uh, I'm not sure if it works personally, uh, but I have seen many people uh, reporting that it works, and I don't think it's been scientifically disproven yet. Taking some time to yourself and uh, staying quiet is a great way to cool down, but uh, obviously for many public events, I don't really have the time to do that. Or once I get to the public event, I'm already stuck on the stage. And it's not like I'm going to be doing yoga when I'm supposed yeah. to be giving a speech. Okay. And uh, my last question to you is, uh, which part of India do you come from? Uh, that's a tricky question. I was born in the U.S. actually, but my brother, mother, and father, they all come from uh, Bangladesh. Okay, fine. So thank you so much for this brilliant uh, session with you. You've answered these questions brilliantly, and we wish you a lot more success in whatever you do. And uh, we're all in admiration, you know, in what you're doing. So best wishes for you. Good night, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good, uh, goodbye.